Hey, what's up? So today I'm uh, out here working in the garage. I wasn't really planning on doing a bunch of stuff. I got a few things done on the firewall and uh, I decided to do the cam swap quick. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> I blocked out the firewall with 220 grit and then I gave it about three coats of primer. I had primered over the spots that uh, I had body worked already and I blocked those with like the 220. First like with a 180 and then a 220 and then I reprimed it now. It's ready for paint. It looks really good. Looks nice and smooth. And then the engine, I, I was just cleaning up the garage and I decided to pull the engine apart. I already had the heads off before so there was only like two bolts holding them on. I pulled the balancer off. I wasn't gonna film it because I didn't want everyone to yell at me if I did it wrong or whatever like the last time. So I got it off, came off like butter. I used a quarter inch ratchet, just pulled it off like nothing. So uh, yeah, it's off now. Uh, I'm gonna start pulling out the old cam. A lot of guys say to do it upside down like this, keep the lifters in place. I could just take the lifters out, I guess, because I have the heads off, but I thought I'd try it this way. I don't know if you can see, but there's a mark here. And then on the upper gear, there's a mark, line them up, that gets everything lined up and then just take these three bolts, take the gear off, pull the cam and uh, shove in the new one. All right, so I pulled the old cam out, it's right here, obviously. Um, I just put one bolt in there and then I have this, I don't know, they call it a lady finger or something. I stuck that down in there and was able to grab it and just carefully pull it out, which worked really good because all the lifters are pushed down so they weren't in the way. The new cam, The sloppy stage 2 Elgin 1840p uh, cam that everybody uses. If you guys haven't pulled one of these apart before, why don't you take the timing chain off, it's three bolts, then there's this uh, plate on here, you have to take that off, and then that goes back on after, you'll see that. Okay, so then I'm going to take this cam, give a little wipe down, some dirt off it, and then I got some, this uh, Permatex assembly lube, put a little bit of that on there, so it's lubed up, lubed up well. A little dabble do ya. Wipe it around there good. And then just carefully slide it in. That's what she said. I mean, you could take the oil pump and the timing chain off and everything if you want. Obviously, if you're rebuilding it, that's not a problem, but I don't want to take the oil pump off. Then you got to like, well, you're supposed to like reclock it and make sure it's in the right spot. I had a pain in the ass doing it on my car, so I don't really want to do it again with this one. Put this in here and then it's just instant power. I might not need the bolt this time. The bolt was so I could pull it. Just like that, it's in there. Beautiful. And this cover plate goes back on. It has Torx style bolts. Supposed to be 22 foot pounds. And I just have to find old Bendy. Torque Ranch of Champions. Alright, that's back on there. Now, I just have to turn the cam until it's where I need it to be. I'll double check it before I tighten it up to make sure it's in the spot I want it. It's 
said you have to reline up those marks. Yep, perfect. And that should be that. Like I said before, there's just a little, there's a notch right here. Right here, I mean, you could paint it with some paint or something. There's a little notch. And then there's a notch on the, uh, on the gear that's on the back side here. And then the same thing, 22 foot pounds. Perfect. And that's uh, putting the sloppy can in a 5.3. Pretty simple. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the timing cover back on. And here's a little tip. Um, they say when you put the timing cover on that you're supposed to like have the balancer on to line up the where the gasket or the this o-ring sits. So I just took an old balancer, I cut it apart just to make it small, and then I just opened it up so that it just slides on here, and then that'll make sure it's in the proper space where it's supposed to be. And then just tighten her up. And these are also supposed to be torqued. Not that you necessarily have to, I suppose, but they're also supposed to be 22 foot pounds. There we go. I'm gonna leave the balancer off for now because I'm gonna clean it up and paint it. Plus I'm gonna paint the engine and this way I can paint it nicer, whatever. And then I'll put the balancer on after. I'll throw it in the sound blaster and sound blast it up. So next I'm gonna pull the pistons out and I'm gonna open up the ring gaps. All right, so it's a day or two later. Uh, I didn't come out here yesterday. So today the plan is to uh, pull the pistons out and uh, open up the ring gaps. So I'm gonna do one at a time, pull one piston, uh, pull the rings off, gap them, put, put it back in and then go on to the next one. But first I'll show you a couple parts I got in today. Uh, this is for my brake upgrade. So we have these carbon ceramic brake pads, nothing too exciting. Brake rotors, there they are. So that's a 12 inch rotor from a 2000 Camaro and that's what I'm going to be putting on the truck. The only thing I'm still waiting on, well I need to order wheel studs and I'm still waiting on the calipers which I ordered off eBay. I'm just waiting for those to come. Once I get them, then I'm gonna start on the brake conversion. Uh, so you'll get to see how that works. I might have to take some of the stuff to Clayton's or Clayton will take it to his work to machine down the rotor surfaces. This is the stock rotor. I think they're like 10 inches. So what you have to do is you have to cut about right here all the way around until you remove this part of the rotor. All you're left with is the hub. I'm probably going to do that here because the guy, the guy who where I read about doing this said you can just do it with a cutoff wheel. And then once it's cut off, then you take, uh, put it on a lathe. I mean, I suppose you could use a, a grinder or something too. And you take down this surface all the way around to a certain diameter. And then once you do that, then the, uh, that part of the rotor that will now just be a hub and it'll slip this rotor will slip onto it on the back side here. So you have to basically turn that rotor down till it fits into here. And then it fits on there and then there's a caliper bracket you have to make and you have to modify the spindles uh, and then uh, it'll all go together. So that's gonna be in an upcoming video. I just thought I'd show you the parts. Uh, so now I'm gonna start pulling the pistons out. Start with this one. Ugh. I'm sure most of you know uh, how to do this, but some may not. No more! The cap off, let's take a look at the bearing. For an engine that has, I don't know, whatever, 180,000 miles or something, the bearings still look pretty good. And then just carefully push the piston out. Careful you don't hit the crank. And it just drops out like that. And now I'll go put it over here. All right, so now 
I got the piston off to remove the rings. You can just slide them off like that. But I also have, I'll quickly grab it. I have this tool that you can also use, which you obviously don't need. As you can see, I took that one off without a problem. But for that, you just put it on the ring and then spread it and pull it off. Some rings, it matters if you put them on right side up, upside down. So if there's a dot, you can see on there there's a dot, the dot always goes up. Okay, so that's ring number two, and that's ring number one. It doesn't have a dot. And then you check it. So that one doesn't matter which way it goes. So there's no dot, then it doesn't make a difference. Sometimes they have a taper on the edge, but this one doesn't. So then what you have to do is you have to take this ring, you have to put it inside the cylinder wall of the engine, line it up, and then measure how much the gap is. After doing some reading, I'm going to go with, like the McDonald's cup says, 24 on the top, 26 on the bottom. So now I'm going to have to take it over there, and I'm going to have to put it in the bore, and I'm going to have to measure So you want to set it in there. You also have to watch, like you don't want to put it right at the top, which you can because that makes it kind of easier to line up, but if the piston doesn't go all the way to the top on some engines, then the bore at the top will actually be a bit more. So you want to go down a bit. So what you can do is you can kind of put it in there and then you could take the piston even try to push it in and use that to like line it up. So I want 24 thou and then I'll try to stick it in there and actually it fits right in there. So because this engine is worn the ring gap's already opened up some so I don't really have to do anything to that one. Yeah that one's already 24 thou so I guess I'm just gonna leave it alone. Doesn't need to be uh, opened up because it already is 24. 24 and look who it is need no more you're not even square to the fucking deck oh my god close enough I'll make a tool for that well do you have one with you you know what you should just take a piston i did that no. i know i just did that with the other one yeah. so that's 27. so you see there's the gap of the ring the focus is and then you take your feeler gauge and you just stick it in there. What I'm seeing from that is that one's good. So probably what I'll end up doing is I'll put this one back together and I'll pull another one and I'll check it and I probably don't even have to gap them. I guess because the engine's worn down a bit, they're already opened up. So I pulled a couple more pistons out and I checked the rings on those and they're the same, 24, 26. So it's all good. I put it all back together. Short block's ready to race. Clayton is prepping the oil pan right now so that he can take it to uh, take it to his work and cut that one like the shit horse one. About a quarter inch more. About a quarter inch more, yeah. I put the windage tray back on. I actually ended up uh, pulling out a couple more pistons. Kind of forgot that number seven is the piston that I had changed before. That one had different rings on it, but I took it apart and the rings were good. So now it's all back together, it's ready for paint, it's ready for the cylinder heads, then go back in the truck hopefully. So uh, that's going to be it for this video, so like always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll check you later.